blessing tonight. And we ask you, God, that you would bless the gift and the giver now, that you would sanctify within us a glad heart because we are glad to give. We're glad to offer our substance to you. And Father, bless the gift that it might be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom and the tearing down of Satan's walls. Bless gift and giver tonight. And we give your name praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for your giving. You can do that anytime during the service and just be a blessing. And the Lord is going to certainly bless you. I want to invite everybody each morning to join Pastor Davis and those from around the world for morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. It is a blessing. We have just celebrated four years, four years of prayer every single day. And by the grace of God, we have not missed one day of prayer. And some of the prayer team has been with us every single day of the four years. And we thank you for your support. And God is using this prayer to bless people all around the world. I wish you could hear every testimony I get to hear of people who are healed, people who are delivered, people who are saved, just because a group of people gather each morning at 630 for prayer. And it's available on Facebook on YouTube, on Instagram, and also by conference call. And we invite you to come and join and be with us each morning at 6.30. Well, tonight we are in for a treat. I don't often get to make the introductions on Friday night, but I'm excited because Refuge Temple is so blessed with so many um, gifted and anointed um, men and women of God who know how to carry the word, know how to deliver the word, know how to pray, and are used of God in a miraculous way. We celebrated Clergy Appreciation Month, and I was grateful for the elders, the ministers, the deacons, the missionaries, the teachers that um, fill Refuge Temple. And we thank God for them because they are able, able, and well able to be a blessing through the word of God. Tonight we have um, my son in the gospel, Elder Richard Taylor Jr., who is an anointed preacher. He is a builder and developer of ministry, but specifically men's ministry. And his men building men in Christ is really crossing um, denominational lines, crossing racial lines, crossing organizational lines, and just gathering men who love God and who want to be blessed by God. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a dynamic preacher. And I'm grateful that he is a part of the team of Refuge Temple. And tonight he is going to bring the word. So without any further ado, Receive the Lord's servant in the person of Elder Richard Taylor, Jr., in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, Elder Taylor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone, tonight. Um, we thank God for being here. and We are excited um, about him. Again, we want to just give glory to the Most High God. He is the reason why we live, we move, we have our being. Amen. He rescued us from a judgment. Amen. We were enemies of the cross and God allowed us to experience this wonderful, marvelous light. Amen. Can you see what the Lord has done? Amen. He brought us out of darkness and we thank God for that. We also want to give honor to our great pastor and leader and, and uh, angel of the house of Refuge Temple. And we want to honor him also in, in this clergy appreciation, um, the, the closing of clergy appreciation month. Um, we just thank God um, for his leadership. And um, God is truly with um, Pastor Davis and uh, his favor continues to rest on his life. And it's good to be a spectator and a participator of what God is doing in our leader's life. We want to also give honor to all of those who are here tonight. In Jesus' name, we thank you and uh, praise God for you being here. And there is a word from the Lord. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of um, type, type to type tonight, but uh, I'm just going to use one. Um, you know, I want you to. Type in that there is a word from the Lord. That's the only type I think I'm going to give you tonight. Um, you know, I usually preach a word of exhortation. Amen. Um, tonight I have been, uh, for the last couple of weeks, God has just been dealing um, with me first um, on this uh, series that I want to start on tonight. 
And God <laughs> confirmed through the scripture reading. I had to uh, message uh, Deacon Taylor because he's uh, shared the same exact scripture I was coming from tonight. I'm like, wait, did you know <laughs> where I was going? Um, and he didn't even know, but you know, this that was just God confirmation. Um, and so I am excited about confirmation. All right, that's another one. I want I want you to type somebody just type confirmation, type confirmation. Amen. We just want to uh flow in the confirmation of the Lord tonight. And so I've been challenged as a believer um with this series um that we're going to touch on and um you know i, I want to just open up by saying that um, we are the first fruits of this message um if this message don't challenge anybody else richard taylor has been challenged uh through the word of god through this um series um and the title of the series um, i'm going to start from tonight is of uh, fighting with rusty weapons, fighting with rusty weapons. Um, the introductional topic tonight um, is going to be, do we see what Jesus sees? Do we see what Jesus sees? You know, I've been challenged um, through um, just the, the word of God. Um, you know, I, um, I love the Lord, uh, just as many of you, um, we attend, um, church and we want, um, you know, the kingdom to be blessed. Uh, but, you know, sometimes even walking in our sincerity, um, there's grace for everybody. <laughs> there's grace for everybody. Um, and, and you can be sincere and still Mr. Mark on some things. And this is why grace is for everybody. Grace and repentance is for the believer and the unbeliever. It's for the just and the unjust. And so we can be um, doing all we think we can be doing and God can show us some more. And so um, again, I want to just talk to those who have an ear. I want to talk to um, the believer and the unbeliever, um, but I want to really um, address the those who are disciples, those who love the Lord, those who want to do God's work. I want to um, address you, the remnant, those who, um, you know, yes, we have a lot of foolishness um, in, in this thing that we call the body of Christ, and we see a lot of things. But uh, God tonight wants to speak to the remnant. He wants to speak to those of us um, that really want to please the Lord. Amen. And, and are trying to grow and do what we can do. So I want to just open up with that, that this message was for me first. And now I'm sharing what was on my table in Jesus name. So I want to come from. Um, again, that scripture uh, is two passages I'm, I want to come from. Um, Matthew, uh, I'm going to start at the 32nd verse, Matthew 9 and 32. And I want you to hold Ephesians. Um, I believe it's, yeah, there's Ephesians, the second chapter, uh, starting at the second verse. And we're going to do um we're going to read down to the 10th verse there. Uh, I'm going to read, be reading from the English Standard Version Bible just to help us um, understand um, the scriptures as it is written. So uh, Matthew 32, uh, 9 and 32 says, And they, as they were going away, behold, a demon oppressed man who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man spoke and the crowds marveled, saying, never was anything like this seen in Israel. But the Pharisee said he cast out demons 
by the prince of demons. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said, after, after he's seen this, let's, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 2, starting at the second verse, and it says, And you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which once you, in, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons or children of disobedience, among whom we all, all of us, lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind but god hallelujah being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together by christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Jesus Christ so that in this coming age he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of our works, so that no one can boast, for we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand, hallelujah, that we should walk in them. Second verse, and ye were dead in trespasses and sin in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the order, the, the, we were just in the cycle, born in sin, shaping in iniquity, following just the course of this world. We were helpless. We were harassed. Why? Because we were following the prince of the power of the ear, that spirit that is now at work in the sons, the children of disobedience, among whom we all, all of us, all of us once lived in the passions of our flesh. Matthew 10 and 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. And just for contextual reasons, amen, uh, 
the 10th verse says, the 10th chapter says this. Hold on, let me pull it up here just so, for contextual reasons. This is what happened right after he said this. And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every afflictions. And let's just read this just for contextual reasons. The seventh verse, and he says, and proclaim as you go, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. Again, if I could take a thought from this introduction, introduction do we see what Jesus sees? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we have studied, we have read your word, your, your beautiful intelligence that you have left to us. You inspired, Lord God, your servants called by you to write. And it's, we're asking you to inspire us tonight. Challenge us. Challenge our hearts, our minds, Lord God. We want to be pleasing to you. We want to do everything that you have called us to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, move on us, Lord. Move me out of the way and speak by your authority that you have given to me, Lord, in the power Matchless name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, to, Lord God, challenge, speak to the souls of us believers, Lord. Lord, take us to another level in you on tonight. Lord, we're hungry and we're thirsting after your word. And when you do this, we will give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. All these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Do we see what Jesus sees? Do we see what Jesus sees? Again, not to repeat myself too much, but I have uh, been challenged over the last weeks. Uh, even leading up to last Sunday, I was struggling um, for a message. And so as preachers do, what preachers do, I wanted to preach from somewhere I preached before. And God would not let me find the scripture. <laughs> he would not let me. And I'm like, Lord, OK, I got a few minutes before I got to go out there and preach and the lord gave me uh, i believe uh, matthew uh, the 11th chapter and um you know just being obedient we preached and that that didn't it, it just shook me it it did not leave me and god began to deal with me even more this week on spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is something that we all have to participate in, whether we like it or not. You know, when you are born in a war-torn country, um, you know, those people didn't ask to be there. <laughs> Nobody said, oh, man, uh, in 2024, I want to be born in, in Palestine or I want to be born in Israel, right in the middle of the war, right in the middle of the missiles and, uh, you know, nobody asks, but, you know, um, we are um, in, uh, because of sin, um, as we know, uh, Adam sent in the garden and because of that, the result is sin. And uh, when we sinned, 
in the garden. It gave the enemy authority to deal with man. Um, and this is why we were separated from God uh, through sin. Sin separated us uh, from God. We have became enemies of the cross. But I thank God for his grace, amen, that he has been shown even in his frustration towards man. He began to deal with the bloodline and uh, made a promise Amen. Even before the foundation of the world, God had a plan uh, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, there would be remission for this judgment. There will be remissions from, from sin. Um, and we thank God for uh, the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank God for saving us. But we are all born in sin and i know that's one of the things that we all push and and it is the truth right we are born in sin um but you know to to, to sweeten it sometimes we leave out that we uh when you are born in sin you are born in captivity you are born a prisoner of the devil, every one of us, because of by default, by sin, we are born in sin. We are born in the course, as we had read in Ephesians, the course of this world, following the prince and the power of the air, that spirit that is at work in the murderers, the spirit that's in at work. And in government, it is all according to the course of this world. And this is why God is going to come back, amen, to judge this world. God is angry with the wicked every day. Hell is enlarging itself, amen. Hell was not created for us. It was not created for us, but because of sin, um, hell is enlarging itself. People are under bondage. They're being harassed. They're helpless uh, because of the power of Satan. Hallelujah. And so when Jesus came upon this earth, and after he fasted and prayed for 40 days, after he faced the enemy on himself, he began to walk in his mission and his purpose. And from there, you see this level of authority to heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to of Satan. He shared with us this intelligence, even as we uh, seen and we read um, in the 32nd verse where he healed the mute man and the Pharisees, um, and not in this particular scripture, but they said it again uh, further down. The Pharisees said that he uh, cast out devils by the prince of devils. Um, and then later on, we see that uh, Jesus is, is healing again, and the Pharisees uh, says it again, and they say that he does this by the prince of Bezabel. And Jesus sh shares with us this intelligence that a kingdom divided cannot stand, that Satan cannot cast out Satan, that there is a principality, there is a ruler of this world, this present time that I am dealing with when I deal with these people. 
Jesus wasn't just healing and, and, and touching, but he was delivering people from the captivity of Satan. Even before, amen, the promise came, Jesus was delivering people from the hold of Satan. My question tonight as I have been challenged, do we see the world like Jesus sees the world? Or have we, be, have we forgotten that every soul that is not with Jesus Christ is under the course of this world following the prince and the power of the air. Have we lost focus? Yes, I know we want people to be saved, but do we really see the full scope of things? You know, because if we did, there would be a sense of urgency amongst all of us that people need Jesus. People need to be delivered from this torment of life. Bishop said it before, and I want to say it again. Satan wants to squeeze the life out of human kind. Yes, he's wearing out the saints, but he is also wearing out this world with stress, with broken promises, with, with uh, uh, you know, people are in this rat race. They're taking three steps forward, taking five steps back. They're experiencing heartache. Uh, they're putting trust in faulty men, and they are being uh, disappointed, and they're, they're failing, and many are committing suicide. They're on drugs. They're developing this anti-Christ mentality and frustration. They're blaming God, when in reality, it's because of sin that they are in the situation that they are in. Have we really lost focus and see what Jesus sees? I'm going to tell you the truth, saints. I have lost that focus. And if you want to be honest, and be with me, because I know it's more than me, right? Yeah, I want souls to be saved, like, like we all. But the sense of urgency, the sense of, well, they'll be okay, and hopefully one day they'll come to Jesus. The, the sense of when I see people possessed and are uh, challenged by this world. Sometimes we just judge their situations. We do just what the Pharisees do. When uh, the, Jesus ran into the blind man, they say, well, who sinned? Did his mother sin or did his father sin? Why is this man this way? And we begin to diagnose people's problems when from... It, it, and in all retrospect, in all truth, they are under the bondage of Satan. There, you, you cannot straddle the fence. And 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 you know what? I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, and I, I'm not saying it to be divisive or to 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 cause any issues. But there is some amongst us that have not been born again, and they have fit into the church system. And they are serving. And we have made Ephesians 
a lie because they're working for the sake of salvation. They're covering their head. They're wearing their skirts. They're, they're carrying their Bibles and their suits and putting their cross on. And Jesus said through Paul, Romans 8 and 9, that if you don't have the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. And yeah, they're serving, they're, they're and, and, and look, I don't want to discourage them to serve. But you still need the Holy Ghost. You, you, you are still according to the course of this world. Yes, you're seeking God. Yes, yes, it's, it's good that you're faithful and you're coming to Bible study and keep coming, keep seeking God. But don't lose focus that when God comes back, he's coming back for his church those that have the spirit of God, we are going to be caught up together with him. That's the grace of God that we, amen, if we believe on him, as the scriptures have said, that we would receive his spirit and be there with him. He would cover us and be with us. But also he has equipped us and we have done a good job as the church getting people to come repent get baptized and become uh servants and it is important we should serve our assemblies we should serve the local church it is good to join your auxiliaries i am not talking bad about that but if we only focus on that and don't realize that Satan's uh, uh, a kingdom is expanding day by day and we in here shouting and preaching to one another and the world is dying. We in here slapping each other a high five and saying I'm blessed and highly favored. And the world is going to hell. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, Lord, we have been so caught up. And, 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 I, and I worded this like this. And I'm not saying that, that we actually did this. But we operate like we gave the devil's kingdom a peace treaty. You stay in the world. You got them. And we got us. And as long as you don't come into our churches and disrupt our services, you can have those souls. And But if they do come into church, I'm not promising, we, we're going to take them. You know, we, they, they come in, we're going to preach the gospel to them. They're going to get saved. But as far as the crack houses, you can have the crack house. As far as the prisons, you can have the prisons. As far as Walmart and, and, and the gas stations and the school systems, you can have that. Just don't bother me and my family. And we operate such as so, and, and we're focused on becoming this anointed individual circling around the circuits and preaching to the masses that are already saved. And meanwhile, this world is dying. They're under the bondage of Satan. When Jesus looked, he, he got finished healing and casting out devils. And Jesus was seeing the multitude of people. He was looking. And I believe he even seen 2024. We're about to go into 2025 and he's seen this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's seen this world. He's seen the hardships. He's seen even, you know, we're about to experience another election. 
and the world is is divided right now where where uh, where under hardship where inflation is raising and people are trying to find other jobs and 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 the enemy is having a field day on these people and we are just saying i'm so glad i'm saved we're saying and, and you you know you know what else we do again we criticize we laugh oh that person is crazy because we forget the whole scope we have lost the scope of the big picture that there is a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness. And by default, as the scripture says, we were born in the kingdom of darkness. Enemies alienated from, from the, 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 the God, but God with his mercy, he was rich in mercy. He gave us this grace this salvation, by grace we're saved. By grace we're able to be able to participate on this side. But he also said this, that the harvest is ripe. And we're getting saved and, and we're using that scripture out of context. Save yourself from this untowards generation. I'm saved, so my job is done. And we're using that out of context. And I'm not saying that we're making a full turn, right? I'm not saying that we're not doing a little bit of part of witnessing, but we are not approaching this thing like it is a war. We're not approaching this thing with the urgency that we need to have. It, we are people are under the captivity of Satan. And who is going to go out there with the power and the authority of Christ? He said, behold, I give you power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, behold, I give you power, power to tread upon Scorpion, serpents, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Before he went up, he told his disciples, you shall be my witnesses. He told them, go in all parts of the world and make disciples. And we have confused membership and discipleship. We have confused. Look, everybody that's a member is not a disciple. And guess what? Everybody that's a disciple is not a member of your assembly. And while, yes, it, it, it is a good thing to build our churches, and I'm not saying that's a negative thing, right? But if our whole goal is just to fill the seats with souls, but not equip anybody to deal with these forces of evil, woe is us. Woe is us. It's time for us to repent. Me first. It's time for us to repent because we have lost Focus on this, the real deal. The devil's not going to stop being the devil because we're not paying him no mind. Matter of fact, that's what he wants. He wants us to be churching in our church, fighting with each other on the, the length of the skirt, fighting with each other on, uh, on, on this issue and that issue. And, uh, um, you know, this church against that church. And meanwhile, his, his hell is enlarging itself. And we sitting here debating. Hell is a large in itself. And we're trying to set up our next preaching engagement. Hell is a large in itself. And we complaining because the missionaries got to wear white. 
hell is enlarging itself because we're wondering and we're wondering how much money we want to raise for the service. Have we lost focus on what is important? Jesus is going to hold us accountable for every time we quench the Holy Spirit. Every time, see, because when we're so focused on church, right, we become passive to what the enemy is doing. And so that person that you ran into walking down the uh, aisle in the supermarket that's a little off, if you was fasting and praying and in tune with the spirit, that could have been your assignment right there. But we're not fasting. We're not praying. And if we are, we're fasting because we need something from the Lord. We're fasting because we want to see a move of God within our four walls. When Jesus rebuked his disciples because they weren't prepared to cast the devil out of the, the, the uh, child of the man. He said, I, I took my son to your disciples and he could not cast them out. Are we? Look, we, we ready to cast out when they in the church, right? We ready to, to deal with them. But have we operated like we got a peace treaty? Like these people are untouchable. Devil, you can have them. Do we see the world like Jesus sees the world? Lord, give us the empathy. Give us that same compassion. Deal with our hearts. Chase after our, deal with us. Trouble our water, Lord. This is a, a sermon of repentance. You know, I'm sorry I make you shout tonight. But this is a Lord, I repent. Lord, forgive me for all the ministry opportunities that I let pass by because I thought I was okay because of the blessing I am to my local church. And again, I'm not knocking there. Be a blessing to your local church, right? I'm not putting one against each other. But on top of that is not our measuring stick. There is a world that Jesus dispatched us in. That is, that is as, as, as well as assembling ourselves together and encouraging and equipping each other, we have to remember we are in a war against the prince and the power of this air. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But what did it say? Rulers in high places. Who is that? Who owns these principalities, these high wicked, these structures? Who orchestrated all of that? It was the devil. I'm done part one. But tonight, God is calling. I believe that we are going to see a revival not just in our churches, but in our personal life through the Holy Spirit. I believe that God is moving on and 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 and, and, and it's it's crucial, right? Because this is going to take an obedience. It's a, God is calling for the saints to turn down their plates to be prepared. Yes, yes, he, he's, he wants to do and answer your prayers. He does. He has not forgotten about us. He is our father. And whatever we ask, he will give to us. But when is it going to be time that you do something for him? When are you going to pick up that cross and go into this world? It's inconvenient. It's scary. Right? But God has not given us the spirit of fear. But power love, and of a sound mind. I know I didn't do the popular thing tonight, but I, I was commissioned by the Holy Spirit 
to challenge those that have an ear, to challenge us that God wants to, he still wants to make this last push of souls coming into the kingdom. But who is going to be like Isaiah? Here am I. Look, we uh, look. I, I, we, we done said, whoa, whoa. We, we are men of unclean lips. Whoa, we, we were distracted. But now God is saying, who will go? Here am I, Lord. I will put my body on the line just like you did. I will not just suck up all your benefits and not do any warring. I will no longer ignore the state that this world is in, but I will see it like you see it. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you, Elder Taylor, for such a rich, sobering, and challenging word. Um, it is time for all of us to accept the responsibility of the kingdom. You know, when each of us stands before Jesus Christ and everybody, saint and sinner, will answer to Jesus. If you are a sinner, you will be at the great white throne where the Bible says the books are open and the book is open, which is the Lamb's book of life. And whoever's name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life shall be cast into the lake of fire. That's the word. But then there's another judgment which belongs to the saints. And the Bible says that every, all of our works are going to be judged as to what quality or what we have offered to God based upon what we have given to God. And it's important that we um, have works because the Bible says our works shall be tried by fire as to what sort it is. And some um, gold, some silver, some wood, precious stones, hay and stubble. And the Bible says that we'll be saved, but our works will be burned. And saints, in reality, we have spent too much time, too much of our lives in church to have our works burned, to have our works burned. But we want to have a word of prayer. El Taylor's going to come back in just a moment and close us with prayer. But if you have a prayer request, we want you to um, put it in chat. If you want someone to follow up with you um, relative to a special need, then go to the messenger section for Refuge Temple or the messenger section for Richard Taylor Jr. or the messenger section for Reginald Davis and put in your request and we will get right back with you um, and reach out to you tonight. But we want to pray and ask God to awaken in us a zeal, a zeal to serve, a zeal to teach, a zeal to minister, a zeal to go after souls, a zeal. We not just simply stand by and watch people die and go to hell and we do nothing about it because guess what? God's going to hold us accountable for that mentality, that spirit, and that inactivity. Talked about laziness one morning in morning prayer. And this is a manifestation of laziness. It's not just laziness when you won't go to work, but when you won't work in the kingdom, that's laziness. And so many people have made the church just a gathering place. We sit, we talk, we listen to the message, we listen to the praise team because most of us don't have choirs and we just go home. And we think that because we've shown up and given our tithes and offering and um, maybe done a little work in the kitchen or whatever afterwards that that's sufficient. And it's not sufficient when God has given us everything we need to be effective at this moment and at this season. Elder Taylor's coming back and he's going to close us with prayer. Once again, you can join Refuge Temple every morning at 6.30 a.m. for the morning prayer. And we urge you to come back and be with us anytime, anytime. We are a hybrid model church. We do a number of things in person each during the week. There's prayer on Monday nights at six o'clock, Wednesday at noon. Um, I've gone back to the sanctuary on Wednesday evenings for prayer and Bible study. All right. But that as is announced. All right. But by the grace of God, I'll be back um, in the sanctuary this coming Wednesday night at um, six at I'm sorry, 730 for prayer, 8 p.m. for the Bible study on Wednesday. And then, of course, on Friday nights, we are online unless we're in the sanctuary for a Friday night worship service and Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. 
We are there for prayer. All right. So you can come to the building. You can meet us online. However, you can access Refuge Temple. Refuge Temple is available to you. God bless you, Elder Taylor. Thank you for allowing God to use you in such a powerful way. Give us our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for dealing with our hearts. Lord, you have, are patient towards us. You, your, your grace continues to teach us. Your grace continues to shape us. And Lord, let this not just be another message that challenges us today and we forget about it tomorrow, but work in us the will to do of your own good pleasure. Lord, you have been so good to us. Lord, you have answered our prayers. You have blessed us with, with things that we uh, prayed for and some things we're not even qualified to have. You have set us in heavenly places because of your grace and our standing with you. Lord, now we want to complete the work, Lord God. We want to complete the work that you have started. And Lord, revive in us the Holy Spirit, revive in us the boldness to go out and win souls, even now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, even uh, some of the souls that are amongst us, Lord, there are some that are watching, Lord God, that people have came in their mind, Lord, while we, we were ministering, Lord. There are people that are under affliction there, oh God, uh, uh, bound by the enemy and we are filling the tug oh God help us Lord God to remain consistent in prayer pray for us like we pray like you prayed for Peter Lord that Satan does not have them Lord God but that they are converted and that they Become one who strengthens. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bind the adversary right now. We speak against every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold in the name of Jesus. One by one, name by name. And God, we ask you, Lord God, as the enemy is loosened, his hold, that you, Lord God, deal with the heart. You, Lord God, trouble and prick the heart so that they can become soldiers used by you. Lord, meet every need. Lord God, relieve, Lord God. Lord, even the saints that are being wore out, even right now, give them strength. Give them victory. Give them the determination to hold on. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us, bless us, and Lord, meet us this Sunday. Lord, God bless the man of God, and Lord, God bless us as we, Lord God, partake in the worship in our assemblies. Be with us, save, heal, deliver, equip us to go out and win souls. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen.